What's up you guys? Adam here. Welcome back to 2740 Solutions. I just wanted to make a quick video on our first real revenue stream that we can talk about, which is Turo. So I'm going to introduce you guys to Turo. Again, that's T-U-R-O, Turo. Um, the quick pitch is that it's the Airbnb for cars. So, you know, you scroll through Turo, you can see all these cool or, or just normal economy cars or anything in between on there. And you can go ahead and rent them from your, you know, your fellow peer. That's why it's called peer to peer car rental. Um, it's more like car sharing. That's how they brand it. Um, but anyway, before we get into uh, some major questions on deciding if you should do Turo, looking at the why, we're gonna just go over some quick, more uh, philosophical stuff. And that has to do with the flag behind me. So um, the flag behind me is a piratey flag. Um, it says, the beatings will continue until the morale improves. So, you know, whether you're a Pirates of the Caribbean fan, or you just, you know, have kind of that outlook on life where, um, you know, life's gonna keep throwing, you know, uh, problems, gonna keep throwing um, just situations you basically have to solve. And that, that's how we have to look at it. We can't, we can't look at it like we're oppressed by life. We can't look at it like someone or the world or a company or, or whatever it may be is out to get you. It's just, you're dealt a set of problems every day. Um, you know, it might add to your to-do list, you know, but it's something for you to do, something for you to get done, something for you to solve. And that's how we have to look at it. So, you know, just like my life has its fair share of, you could say problems um, that affect maybe, that could affect my morale. Um, it's, it's not gonna get better unless I do something about it. And that's how we all have to look at it. Um, on the other side of the, uh, the screen here, we have, uh, a Jocko Willink, Joe Rogan podcast. I'm a big Joe Rogan podcast guy, the JRE experience, or the Joe Rogan experience, so JRE. Um, and that, that's what kind of prompted me to explain the flag in the background and um, kind of get into it a little bit. But I just dropped my phone, so spook Davey. This is Davey Jones right here. Welcome to the channel for the first time, Davey. He's a golden doodle. He's about 75 pound pup, nine, pound, or nine, uh, nine months old, it's about 70 pounds. So. He's a big boy, uh, he's a good boy too. So with that, with that being said, um, let's get into it. So um, chances are that you guys have something that you can probably uh, say you spend most of your time at, whether it's a day job, whether it's school, whether it is volunteering, you know, pretty much everyone I know has something that takes up the majority of their time. So a lot of times we're okay with that uh, whether it's for me, you know, for me, my full-time job is an active duty army officer, which we can get into uh, some of the pros and cons of that later. But that's, you know, that's my main time, uh, time user, you know, hours, you know, between eight and 14 hours a day. If you're here, you know, stateside, or if, hey, if you're deployed, I mean, you're technically on the clock 24 seven. It's just a question of, you know, if you're sleeping or you're working or you're working out or whatever. So we'll get into that too much, but, um, one of the things that I definitely am prone to is overanalyzing things and kind of generating this, this FOMO. So FOMO being fear of missing out. So um, for me, it's better to do something and fail at it or maybe not achieve what the results you thought you were going to. That is better in my mind, like for my mental health than not doing it because then I just go through the rest of my life saying, well, what if this, what if that? And you just, you can what if yourself into oblivion. I mean, you're, you know, whether you want to call it Monday morning quarterbacking or whether you want to call it what if, you know, playing the what if game, you know, there's an easy way to eliminate the fear of missing out and regrets. And that's called doing it, um, whatever that, that is. So um, for me, while I was uh, deployed to Iraq in 2019, um, near the end of the deployment, when we had some downtime on some days, you know, I watched some YouTube videos, uh, Graham Stephan, um, or Meet Kevin, a couple of those finance, see the fi more finance YouTube channels. And um, they just got me thinking about, you know, what other ways can I, I make money? What other ways can I develop as a person? Um, that's not just in the army because you know, I, I feel that I am pretty successful in the army, um, in my job and then just in general, and that's good. But, um, the army, 
will only give you so many aspects of training. Like, you know, the army makes it tough to work on your business side, your customer service side, your, I mean, they kind of take care of everything, you know, healthcare, investment slash pension plan. Everything is kind of structured for you so that you can kind of think about it as much as or, or as little as you want within reason. So that's why I, I decided I wanted to learn how to make money on the outside of the army, not just not on my day job. But you guys don't have to be in the army to feel the same way, you know. Let's just say you're an accountant or you're a Uber, or well, Uber driver is seen as a little bit more of a hustle, but hey, if that's the only way you're making money, then you know, that's your mainstay and you're comfortable with it, chances are. Like, you can look at something else now. So, uh, we've kind of, we've covered FOMO. Um, and that how at least I think it's better to try and fail or just try and maybe not be as successful or have another door open than never try at all because the never try at all is just, it doesn't solve anything. So let's go into Turo. Should you do Turo? Now, I'm as much as I want to uh, share, you know, screen share revenue, screen share profit, screen share car payments, screen share deals that I've done on cars and how I've rolled in 0% financing or, you know, do two cars for one or one car for two, all those crazy deals, which we'll get to. Um, I think we need to focus on the why. So if you have the why for whatever you do, whether that's Turo or Uber or investing in stocks or um, some of the other stuff, you know, like affiliate marketing, I'm really um, looking to get into the affiliate marketing uh, space. So if you have the why, that's gonna propel you to do the things that are necessary, do the things that others won't today so that you can do whatever you want to do tomorrow. So um, with that being said, I think that you should do Turo if you like to buy cars, if you like to buy and sell cars, because at some point you have to get out of the car, but if you enjoy buying cars and, and having that car and it excites you, I think that that is a major part of uh, the Turo experience. Because if you hate buying cars, you hate car dealerships, you hate maintenance, you hate anything to do with kind of the car buying and owning experience, then doing Turo is gonna be like pulling teeth. So um, that's, the, that's number one. And for me, I love car buying. I like car selling too, but I love buying cars. And a lot of people think I'm weird for that. Um, next is you're going to want to, if you want to provide a great customer service experience. So a lot of us don't necessarily like the, the area of customer service. If you just think of it in general, but if you love cars and you love the car buying and selling experience and you love, you know, cleaning the car and talking to people about your car and providing a great experience, um, if you're willing to do that, you're willing to text, text and call your um, your renters, your guests. I like to call them guests. That helps. Uh, it it kind of helps. It just makes them feel more welcome. Just kind of like at a hotel. They don't they don't say that you're leasing a room at a hotel. They call you a guest or they call you, you know, whatever little branding they have. So you know, diamond member at Hilton, whatever that is. But um, you know, just as long as you're open and willing to provide a great customer service experience, service experience, then you you should be successful uh, on the app to a varying degree. But it's gonna, it takes into other factors, but you really can't do well without great customer service. And the, one of the big criticisms of the Turo app is that customer service is so inconsistent. You know, you have some hosts like myself, I have about, a, I have about 100 trips all five star ratings. I have very niche cars from, you know, like Charger Daytona, um, a Grand Sport Corvette. I even had the 2020 Corvette on there at one point. I've had Toyota Supras on there. I've had Ford Raptors. All my cars are unique, they're niche, um, and I feel very passionate about it. I can talk, uh, talk to the screen all day about those cars. I talk to my customers about them um, all the time. And that it, that allows me to provide a great customer service experience because I genuinely love my cars and uh, it, it's that fuel. It's like that you know intangible fuel that allows you to just be excited about something and that's an excitement I'm trying to bring to these videos as well. So 
customer service. If it's something you like to do, your customer, ser your customer service will just be automatically increased. Um, next, you gotta be at least a little bit creative and open to logistics. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, depending on where you live, so the more metropolitan area you're in, usually the more convenient it will be for you. Because you gotta think, most of your target market is going to be in those built up areas. Uh, just the population density, close to an airport, especially if you have nice cars, close to decent to high level hotels. Because you gotta understand that, you know, when people are spending money on hotels, they're spending money, and they're more likely to spend money on other things too. Now, you know, Uber and Lyft are competitors, are, you know, inadvertent competitors. They're, they are still vying for that rental car market space because people often say, you know, should I rent a car or should I just Uber, Lyft, taxi everywhere? And, you know, you have to show that you provide more value than just hopping in a random Uber or Lyft. Now, with the current situations, uh, you know, the current events that we, we find ourselves with. It's, it's the 12th of June, 2020, so I'll let you guys fill in those blanks there. But you can make a good argument that a rental car is the safer and, um, you know, the, the, the better alternative for a lot of people who are concerned with what's going on in the world right now. So, um, you know, you just have to be creative with delivery, drop off where you store the cars. You know, I live, about 45 minutes outside of Nashville, which is, that's my target market. You know, I'll, I'll take a, a great rental here up in, up in Clarksville, Tennessee, hop 